Hi. So I, yeah, I said I would film a second trimester truth video and I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you so much for all of your support and love and yeah, kind comments on my first trimester truth video. Um, yeah, it was really nice to hear from other people who've been through the same thing or who are going through the same thing and were feeling a little bit alone and kind of lost in the horrible, muddy first trimester tiredness and sickness hell. So yeah, welcome back if you did already watch the first one. If you haven't, you can find it linked below or it's just on my channel under the pregnancy kind of playlist section. But yeah, today I'm talking about trimester two. Yeah, the nice, happy, glowy middle section that I never thought I'd get to, but I did. And then I went all the way through it, and now I'm in trimester three, which is, <laughs> yeah, the part where I just seem to get bigger and bigger and bigger by the second. But I'm going to talk about that, I guess, once baby's here. But yeah, I'm going to refer to my phone, because over the second trimester, I have been making notes on my iPhone so that I know what to talk about, because otherwise, yeah, my brain is mush, and I'll just sit here and stare blankly at the screen for the moment. I actually went to a meeting this morning with kind of studio collective to talk about collaborations and I tried to say product photography and I said product photography, pr photography and I, I just couldn't say photography, I said it about six times, it was really embarrassing and there was like ten other people in the room and I just couldn't say photography so I think I'm reaching peak baby mush brain at the moment which is uh, mildly depressing and the whole world tells me it never comes back so good. But yes, trimester two, let's see what I have. So luckily the sickness did subside from trimester one. That was really nice. And then, I mean, I wouldn't, I still wouldn't say I feel glowing. I don't feel like I will ever get to that stage. I still feel a little bit like a gray slug, but I certainly feel like a more confident, comfortable gray slug than I did before without having all of the tiredness and the sickness and actually looking pregnant right now, I think, yeah, a little bit of body confidence or self-confidence has come with that. And I don't know whether that's to do with just the settling of hormones and the subsidence of the horrible symptoms or, and kind of getting used to the changes in my body or whether it's been to do with the fact that I've started exercising a bit more. I have found swimming really really good in the second trimester much more so than the gym though I have been keeping up with boxing and I've also been doing pregnancy yoga classes and those haven't just been about kind of like stretching and breathing but a lot about having the kind of <laughs> confidence in yourself that you can do this and you can get through it and that you know, you are strong and powerful and you are very capable. So I don't know whether kind of that yoga-y positive affirmation uh, aspect of things has kind of helped make my second trimester more calm and less anxious. But it seems like ages ago that it was the first trimester and now I'm in the third. So thinking about that nice little middle gap is quite difficult, but essentially, the first sort of thing that I noticed that was different from the first trimester, another, a new fun symptom, shall we say, and not everybody gets this, was round ligament pain. So I started getting quite sharp stitch-like pains on the, like, underside of my tummy and kind of on both sides, really, from the sides of my hips under my tummy right to the centre, and it was really quite uncomfortable like shooting pains and I don't think no I can't have said it in my first video because I didn't have the symptoms but yeah I started getting round ligament pain I also started getting some pelvic pain and coccyx pain so I guess as your uterus is getting a lot bigger and your organs and various things are starting to shift about and shift upwards as your baby starts to fill that nice little space inside your tum where everything usually sits and um, it puts a lot of pressure on your joints and your ligaments and during this time your body is being flooded with the hormone relaxin and that also makes your ligaments nice and relaxed i.e you know in order to help 
those relax and open up when your pelvis change shape as you're about to go into labour and to help baby get out through the birth canal and everything be nice and movie for that to happen. What it also sometimes does is causes aches and pains and I think for me because I'm already hypermobile which has kind of caused some problems since I was really little and my joints are over flexible anyway with the added <laughs> relaxing hormone to those ligaments yeah I've gone super flexy and so I found that my coccyx particularly in my sacrum you kind of tailbone had like I guess everything gone really relaxed and slipped right out of place and so I was in a, quite a lot of pain it was really uncomfortable to sit down for any more than like 15 minutes standing up was fine laying down was fine sitting on anything whether it was my bouncy swiss exercise ball or my desk chair like a firm chair or sofa all of it was really uncomfortable and I was finding that the longer I sat specifically so particularly doing my work I was, yeah, yeah, the longer I sat, the more pain I was in, and getting up from the chair was like, it was like being a hundred years old, and really stiff, and just really uncomfortable, and I was like hobbling around, so I did try uh, things like ice packs, and hot water bottle, and like heat and ice, and things like that, you know, obviously you can't take ibuprofen, or any anti-inflammatory drugs whilst pregnant, I didn't want to anyway, and I didn't really want to take paracetamol either, because I'd just rather not take medication if I can help it basically because obviously even though it's a small amount some of that will still go through baby and I just if I can avoid it I'll avoid it so yeah I didn't take any painkillers but I tried kind of stretching and I tried ice and heat didn't really work so I booked an appointment with the GP to talk about it annoyingly his response was that it's totally normal during pregnancy and I can expect it to get worse which is not what I wanted and so I asked if I could be referred to either a chiropractor or a physiotherapist and the NHS now don't support chiropractors or osteopaths or anything like that but they do refer to physio so I was referred to a physiotherapist which was a real waste of time really because again they just said oh yeah it's quite normal during pregnancy you I guess you could try this stretch and like kind of leaning forward and doing this or laying on the bed and lifting your bum up and doing some glute bridges that could help it was all really vague and everybody just kind of suggested that I should just accept it it was going to get worse and just live with it whereas I'm the sort of person that I just feel like if there's anything I could do to mitigate that pain or ease it or work it back you know help the joints and the ligaments and things get back into the right alignment and strengthen them then I would much rather do that and keep it at the level it's at then or prevent it from getting any worse than just accept that that's how it's always going to be so I asked on Instagram actually whether people had experienced the same thing and what had helped them and literally I had a ton of messages from people that had been pregnant or were pregnant or were osteopaths or chiropractors saying go and see an osteopath or a chiropractor because there are plenty that specialise in pregnancy and they can really, really help manipulate things gently because obviously you've got a baby, you don't want to be cracking and clicking like you would normally all over the place, back into place and help it stay there. So I booked an appointment with a chiropractor and at that point I was really quite uncomfortable all the time and she specialises in babies and pregnant women and she was really really good i had my first session with her she did do some like kind of classic cracky manipulations on the top of my back obviously well away from baby because as i'm hunched over doing my illustrations and stuff like that i kind of tightened up everything and misaligned my spine that way but then she spent quite a long time kind of stretching out and like almost massaging the back of my pelvic joints and sort of trying to slowly and gently manipulate my sacrum and my coccyx back into place because she said she could feel that basically one side of my pelvis had kind of clunked over my coccyx and so my coccyx had slipped down and underneath and my pelvis had gone over it and there just wasn't really any way of it getting back to where it needed to be without manipulating my pelvis and just helping that get back into the right place. Because my body is still flooded with relaxing, you know, she said it's not like we can click it back into place and it's going to stay there forever. It, the likelihood is it will kind of move back a little bit and it will be like an ongoing treatment thing. Um, and then she gave me some really good stretches to do that like really help 
get that all back as it should be and keep it there. So that was really good. After that, I felt better almost immediately. You know, it's not made the pain go away completely, but I'd say over the last two months that I've been having it, I started having it one session a week. I did that for about three weeks and then I dropped it down to, then, then I went two weeks later and then I went three weeks later and now, it must have been three months ago, and now I haven't been for a month and I don't really feel like at this point I need to because I'm in pain maybe 10% of the time and I, you know, and I know it's because I've sat for too long and if I walk around and I do some stretches and I sit on an ice pack for a bit, it, it alleviates it. So obviously it has kind of helped to manipulate it back into place. So whilst I would say, use your own judgment, I know that chiropraxy and osteopathy are not for everybody, you know, they are more alternative medicines, but certainly for me, I was in quite a lot of pain and I wanted to try <laughs> try anything that was going to kind of help it, and it did, so I think it's really good. I would personally recommend it myself, but obviously that is totally up to you, it's all personal preference. But yeah, that was something that was really frustrating was the horrible coccyx pain and the round ligament sort of stitch like pain I was getting quite a lot. Another fun symptom I guess of the second trimester was that I've really struggled with sleep. It's not so much that I am too big yet at this point to find a comfortable position, it just seems to be that my sleep has been really disturbed, like I wake up three, four, five times a night and for me, I just I keep finding myself on my back. So the midwife and kind of NHS recommendations for sleeping during pregnancy are that you should try and sleep on your left hand side or one side, left or right. But left hand side is generally more comfortable because something to do with the opening where your stomach is is on one side. So if you lay on your left, you're not kind of letting all your stomach juices and acids kind of I don't know, leak out, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but it's supposed to give you really bad indigestion, etc. if you sleep on your right side. And for my entire life, I've slept on my left side with no problems, but since I've been pregnant, I, I just can't seem to not sleep on my back. And they say don't sleep on your back because the added weight and pressure of your womb can press or put pressure on one of the major arteries from your heart and make you shorter breath and stop your breathing and things like that and also squishes the placenta which restricts the blood supply to baby which just isn't very good obviously so whilst it's not like don't sleep on your back or everything will go terribly wrong it's like try not to sleep on your back seriously don't sleep on your back sleep on your side and I just keep waking up on my bloody back and it's just driving me nuts I wake up all through the night on my back with the cats on top of me because I'm like a in furnace at the moment and yeah and I'm just wedged and then I have to roll back onto my side and I've tried so many things I've propped myself with long pregnancy pillows down my back to keep me on my left and then one of the horseshoe pregnancy pillows through my legs to try and keep me there I've had you know another pillow in between my knees to try and keep my pelvis aligned and keep me comfortable and a little pillow under my tummy to hold the weight of that you know I've literally tried everything Jack's wedged me into like a little pillow fortress in the bed to keep me on my side and yet somehow I still wake up on my back so yeah and I don't know if the disturbed sleep is something to do with your body prepping you for <laughs> the imminent arrival of a baby that's going to want feeding all throughout the night. I don't know if it's like a kind of evolutionary sort of thing, whether it's just a me thing, but it seems to be quite common. Or, yeah, I just don't know what it is because I feel like now is the time when I really, really just want to get loads of sleep. Like, because I'm never going to get sleep ever again, so I need to get it now, and I just can't. But more and more as I've kind of gone through the entire second trimester, I've found that what's appears to be waking me up at the moment is actually baby kicking because every time I wake up it doesn't seem to be a coincidence that I'm getting kicked and thumped from the inside so I'm thinking maybe at the moment he's waking me up and that's what's kind of causing my disturbed sleep but interestingly the, my yoga teacher said that at this sort of time onwards I should start keeping it's helpful to keep a diary of when baby's really active because that generally carries through once they're born these kind of patterns that they've developed so that would be really interesting if he does wake up at the times that he's been waking me up through the night at the moment 
But yeah, disturbed sleep is not so fun. I just feel tired a lot of the time because I haven't just had a solid eight hours, which I was used to before. And also, really weird nightmares. Like, not like nightmares about childbirth or fears about the baby or anything like that, just really freaking weird, terrifying nightmares. Like if I read the news at any point during the day, or things I see, just totally normal things I'll see day to day will seem to like culminate and then I'll have this really terrifying nightmare where I'll <laughs> wake up or, or Jack will, it'll wake Jack up because I'll be like whimpering in my sleep having this horrible nightmare. So yeah, that's really fun and that's happened during the second trimester and all the time. So I don't know what that is, but my pregnancy app and things that I have on my phone has been telling me that really vivid dreams is one of the kind of symptoms of this kind of section of pregnancy. So that's super weird. I wouldn't be so bothered if I had vivid, happy dreams, but they just seem to be like terrifying nightmares, which is the least fun. I think another thing that's kind of been an, like an overarching theme of the second trimester, which didn't feel like something that was it within my consciousness really in the first is like thinking about how strange it is having something living and growing and moving inside me <laughs> because I guess obviously because I can feel him a lot more now you know he is really really kicking me to the point where my whole stomach is like shifting around and it's like alien like the top of my stomach's rippling and yeah he's very very active all of the time and I can tell now what's like a elbow and what's like a like fluttery sort of hand and what's a good old thump with a foot and what's him just lurching around and rolling over and shifting position. So, you know, it must be to do with the fact that during this whole second trimester, you go from feeling the tiniest little gentle flutters of, oh my gosh, my baby's in there, that's really exciting this seems really real to, oh wow, okay, you are kicking me right up under my rib and this is very strange and why are you sitting on my bladder and this is very uncomfortable. So, you know, I'm sure it comes hand in hand with that side of things. But yeah, it's just, I've spent a lot of time thinking about like how mind blowing this whole process is. Like, it's insane. Like the female body goes from like, you know, I spent 30 years of my life with all my organs in the one place in my body and then nothing's in there, you know, totally dormant. And then suddenly, you know, a, f a few short months ago from nothing, from a tiny egg, is an actual flipping huge growing baby in there that, you know, my app is telling me he is having dreams. What about? I have no idea because he hasn't seen anything. All he can see presumably is like red, internally watery womb world but yeah apparently they're having sleep cycles and dreams and he's got hair and his eyelashes are formed now and he can open his eyes and he's practicing breathing amniotic fluid but it's like it's crazy like he responds to music i've been playing sounds very strange but the frog song not crazy frog but the frog song from the like rupert movie by paul mccartney if you haven't listened to it maybe google it I'm not gonna start singing it, but I really like it. It's really nostalgic. I remember watching the video when I was really little quite a lot of times, as children do, on VHS at my grandma's house. And it's just a really happy little song. And so I've been playing it to him through my iPhone, holding it against my tummy almost every day <laughs> through the second trimester. And it's crazy, he goes, he goes mental. He'll start kicking wherever the phone is. If I move the phone to the other side of my tummy, he'll start kicking there and the same when the cats come and sit on me, Momo is taken to, you know, if I'm laying on the sofa, snuggling right down my side and then putting his little hand right over my tummy and purring away so loudly. And wherever Momo's laying, baby kicks, <laughs> kicks him. And so it's like, you know, it's not just this little fluttery nothing anymore. It's an actual human that is responding to sound and, you know, is gonna grow into his own little person and it's yeah it's blowing my mind a little bit it's blowing my mind that in a few short months i'm gonna meet him and i've made him in my tummy from literally nothing and i feel like i'm still doing nothing this is all happening without me and i'm just going about my daily life and you know in the second trimester you've got all that nice energy and i've been 
doing all the things I would normally do, trying to cram in every opportunity that I can. If someone says, do you wanna go like to a concert at the weekend? A couple of weeks ago, went to see Bon Iver, just in London, got the train down, wasn't gonna go, didn't even know about it. Friend had a spare ticket, decided to hop on the train and go. Like I'm trying to do a million and one things now whilst I can, because I know that I'm gonna get really big soon and then I'm gonna have a baby and then, you know, things are gonna be a little bit more difficult to do on the fly. But yeah, I don't know, I've lost my train of thought completely there. Another fun baby brain thing. I don't know why I was telling you all about why I'm doing things spontaneously. Hmm. But yeah, I don't remember where I was. Baby, personality. Little person. Yeah, I don't know, I have a baby brain. It's all gone to mush. I'm gonna move on. I went so deep into that story that I lost the whole point of why I was telling it. But I, what I would say to you, <laughs> if you are pregnant now and you are in a nice second trimester where everything's lovely and you feel pretty good. Oh yeah, that's what I was saying. That yeah, it's really weird because you're carrying on your day-to-day -day lives, doing all the fun stuff, and yet whilst you're just being you, inside your body it's like cooking up this baby and making it bigger and bigger and it's getting a sense of self and it's just crazy it's just freaking crazy um yeah th this trimester has just made me in awe of everything because it's all becoming very real and it's just amazing and i can't wait to meet him but also yeah going on from the like body doing it all for me my organs are literally just jumbling themselves around. That's really strange. Like, you know, everything that was in that nice tummy area space of my body obviously isn't there now. It's all shifted up here. You know, along with that has come nice fun symptoms like a little bit of indigestion and heartburn. Haven't had that in my life before, but um, yeah. Swimming has been awesome. It's kind of, I think helped to kind of, wiggle things gently back into place and also it's been a really nice way of getting my cardio exercise in but not knackering myself out and injuring myself at the gym because it's becoming increasingly harder to do the things that I'm very used to and very capable of doing um, just because I've got so much extra weight so full disclosure I have put on already <laughs> 13 kilos which is at the very top end of what the NHS would expect you to gain during an entire pregnancy and I still have this nice third trimester which is the biggest weight gain part to go so I am really going to be toad of toad hall soon but yeah I'm not too worried I'm keeping active it's fine I will body's doing important things and whatevs basically I'm hoping the baby is like 13 kilos or like my placenta weighs 12 kilos and the baby's a kilo or you know something like that something like that would be great it would be great if all of that extra weight was just a really heavy placenta or something and then afterwards I was back to normal oh baby just kicked me in the weirdest place that twanged a ligament there oh thank me yes swimming has been ace if you can swim whilst you're pregnant, even if it's just some gentle up and down lengths, it's definitely worth it because birth is, I'm told, a marathon. And so being as fit as you possibly can is really important. And like I said, at the gym, there is more risk on your joints and on your muscles because you're carrying all of that extra weight as well as any weights you're doing or as well as any body weight exercises you're doing. And so that can be a little bit less easy and a little bit less safe isn't the right word but swimming is a lot more gentle on your body and yet still delivers the results of really good cardio exercise. I'm really lucky in that the Keys in Southampton, our local leisure centre, offers free swimming. You get like a free membership pass whilst you're pregnant. I didn't find out because no one told me until I was past 20 weeks but I've been making the most of it since then. So I know that Active Nation is the company that runs the Keys and they have quite a lot of leisure centres across the country and I think that they do these free kind of pregnancy passes up until two weeks after your due date or the point you've had the baby across all of those sites so it's definitely worth checking that out or you know whatever ledger center is nearest to you it's worth asking because i had no idea and then i was told and i could have been swimming for free the whole time so it's been really good it's just unlimited access to the pool 
So I'm intending to swim right up until due date if I can. Just keep my fitness up. It's something for me. It's really relaxing. It's just a little bit of like downtime where it's just me and the baby and we're just bob bobbing around together. I say that I've been doing 100 lengths of the 25 meter pool each time purely because I I used to swim competitively about 15 years ago. So, and I haven't done it since, well, probably for 10 years, but I guess because I've kept my fitness up and I've always had that kind of skill and stamina in the water, it hasn't really left me, which was really nice. So I found it easy really to just keep up with that and do, you know, 100 lengths, about 50 minutes or an hour of swimming. And then I don't feel exhausted or anything like that. I just feel <laughs> energized and I get out and then have a shower and go home and it's nice. But I definitely wouldn't advocate that for, you know, people that haven't done much swimming or, you know, aren't into their fitness big time. Just do whatever feels right for you. Don't push yourself too far. Just, you know, do what feels right. Listen to your body. If you, you know, get in the water, you do 10 lengths and you just do it nice and slowly, then that's better than no lengths. So, yeah, do whatever feels right for you, basically. But if you can, swim, because it's ace. Oh, something else that was crappy about the, the second trimester on my notes here, um, is, well, was having to have a glucose tolerance test. So not everybody has to have them. I think in the US they do like a finger prick test where they prick your finger, squeeze a little bit of blood out and put it on a test paper and they kind of test your blood sugar levels. And you know, if you're normal, when they do that little test, then they don't worry about it. But basically with the NHS, if you tick any boxes um, of risk factor, family history for diabetes or overweight or various other things, factors if you tick any of those boxes they will send you for a gtt test a glucose tolerance test and i hate needles i really do i've got a hideous or i had previously a really hideous phobia of needles stemming from a very traumatic experience about 10 years ago but yeah i've always hated them so the thought of having to have midwife bloods all the time was hideous but then the thought of having to have a glucose tolerance test where yeah just to explain what it is so you get given your appointment at the hospital in the morning and you are told to fast from dinner time the night before. You literally can't have anything except water. You go in for your appointment, mine was at 10.40, which was fun, I was very hangry. And you, therefore it's your kind of like resting blood sugar level. So you go in, they take your blood, then they make you drink two huge glasses of very thick sugary syrup water, which was really revolting. You have to drink that within five minutes. At this point, you've still had no food, uh, just these nice sugary syrup waters. And then they make you go and sit back out in the waiting room of the hospital, which in my case was literally right next to the flipping cafe. And the cafe in the hospital that I go to, it's got like lovely cakes, biscuits, sandwiches, all sorts of nice food, hot drinks, and everyone was just pottering around, enjoying their little snackies and hot drinks whilst I was sat there just fed up, grumpy and tired and hungry. But yeah, you sit there for two hours and then they call you back in and then they take your blood again. And uh, once they've done that, you can go home and have something to eat. I thought they'd give me a sandwich or something or a chocolate bar or just anything because I just sat there all day and I had nothing to eat and I might keel over in the street as a pregnant woman, but they didn't give me anything. And I didn't want to pay the extortionate prices in the cafe. <laughs> so I walked home really fast and I scoffed a cho chocolate rice cake I had in my bag um, on my way home because I was ravenous. But yeah, the idea is they then send those bloods off for analysis and they look at your like resting glucose level and then they look at the glucose level after you've drunk this sugary drink and it's been through your system for two hours and then they tell you whether you your pancreas, whether your body is dealing with the sugar properly or whether it isn't. And if it isn't, then you are likely to have gestational diabetes, which is something that you can Google. It is relatively common. It's fairly easy for them to monitor and deal with, but they need to know because it comes with all different symptoms. Baby gets really, really big and things like that. So you just need to be aware if that is something that you have. So yeah, they test you for gestational diabetes by looking at how well your body processes the sugars. And yeah, I just, it was horrible. I was dreading that test because like I said, I really hate needles. Um, I get really panicky. I've had actual full blown panic attacks in the doctors before when I've had to have a simple blood test. But first good news is I don't have gestational diabetes. So that was nice, positive bit of news for me. And then the second thing was that <laughs> I've had 
so many different sets of midwife bloods. I'm doing a clinical trial. I don't know if I mentioned that in the first trimester video, but basically I'm doing a kind of like medical research thing. And as part of that, I need to have extra blood tests. So I've got midwife bloods all the time, extra blood tests. I had to have my glucose tolerance test that not everyone had to have. And I feel like I've been poked and prodded and pricked with needles constantly for the last seven months now. And weirdly, it's been like exposure therapy, I guess, because I don't want to speak too soon because I've got more tests coming up, but yeah, I've got to the point where I don't look forward to these things, but I kind of, well, I'm not having panic attacks, I'm not going grey and sweaty and clammy, and I'm able to just sit there and let them do it and not panic, which has been amazing. So I wouldn't say I'm over the fear because I still don't like it, but I'm certainly a lot more tolerant of needles than I ever was before, which is good because it's a pretty horrible thing to have and it's been a relief to be able to relax a bit whilst having them. The problem that I have is that I've got really, really small veins, <laughs> like really small, really high D, no one can ever find them veins. And so in the past, other than the traumatic experience, in the past people have like put the needle in and gone, oh, missed it, let me try again. Oh, just missed it again, let me try again. By what, which point like they're digging around in my arm and I'm going gray and clammy and really panicky because it's just horrible. They're just twanging around, like they get it, it collapses. It's just horrible. So what's been really good having all these tests and speaking to the midwives and things like that is they've given me loads of different tips for when I go for a blood test, which I'll use for the rest of my life, I guess. But, you know, I know now that a normal sized needle is too big for my <laughs> puny little veins and I need to have a butterfly needle, a green butterfly needle specifically. But, you know, they've said to me, every time you go for a blood test, whoever you have it with, first thing is tell them you need a butterfly needle because if they know what they're going into then it's a lot easier for them to deal with it you know tell them you don't like blood tests be open with them so they can like lay you down or whatever and yeah say to them my veins are a bit tricky I need a butterfly needle they'll get one out and then it will save having all the jabbing around with a big needle it not working having to go with a small needle in the other arm so that's really helped. So I've got a little sticky note now on my blue notes that says green butterfly needle and hydration because I didn't realise how much of a difference drinking loads of water before a blood test actually um, makes. So I guess it makes your veins and your skin all like plumped up and hydrated and not all like raisiny and whisked away. So yeah, I've been just drinking loads of water before every blood test and touch wood, except for one time when she was still very good and didn't really dig around too much, but they've got the vein every single time, first time, so that has made me very happy. But yeah, so if you've got tricky little veins as well, maybe ask for a green butterfly needle and make sure you drink loads of water. Top tips there. But yeah, I feel like that's it really. Second trimester is a lot less hideous than the first, though I feel like I have talked for ages about negative stuff. Generally, headspace-wise, I felt pretty good. You know, I feel pretty confident. I can still do all the things that I want to do. And because I'm not feeling sick, I'm, yeah, I feel pretty much like my normal self, which is nice. So I'm just at that point now, as I said, because I am actually in the, the beginning of the third trimester where <laughs> bending down and tying my shoelaces up and bending down and doing anything or sitting down and getting up is a little bit difficult because it feels like you're trying to do all of that with like a bowling ball essentially in your stomach and it's just immovable. Whereas when you've just got a soft normal tummy without a baby in it, you know, you can squish your tummy down and make a load of, you know, rolls and roll and do the things. But yeah, when it's like a solid ball of placenta and fluids, not so easy. So yeah, moving is a bit difficult, but generally really really good so if you're in the first trimester watching this and you're feeling like absolute crap know that it is a good little time coming up so yeah and the symptoms are kind of meh like you're used to symptoms by this point like it's like oh fun another symptom that's great but also meh it's not so bad i'm starting hypnobirthing classes tomorrow which is really exciting because i've heard really good things so again i'll kind of share my insights on that once i've done the course and once i've <laughs> pushed out the baby hopefully but yeah that was all any questions about anything give me a shout if I've mentioned something and I could link to it and I haven't 
give me a shout. But yeah, I've got loads planned coming up with the baby nursery that needs sorting. I've done the mural in there. I just need to put the furniture in and kind of sort that out. So I'm going to do a tour of that. I'm going to do a what's in my hospital bag as I start to think about that. I've been ordering things and getting stuff ready. And I'm going to do a new baby slash new mum essentials because I've had loads of recommendations from people. I'm going to be trying loads of stuff myself that I've bought and that I've been sent and things like that. And so, yeah, I wanted to share the love in that respect. That's all from me. I will no doubt speak to you soon and yeah have a have a good one <laughs> hope that wasn't I don't feel like that was as terrifying as the first trimester and I don't feel like I'm a big angry grouch anymore I feel like I'm all right so hope you enjoyed watching <laughs> and uh see you soon <laughs> bye